Well, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Stephen Lester. I'm a cardiologist. I work at the Mayo Clinic. And this morning, I had the opportunity to share with individuals some of my thoughts around the concepts of imaging for cardiovascular risk prediction. It's quite amazing to think that the disease that's most likely to cause morbidity and mortality for all of us is really cardiovascular disease. And our risk of dying from cardiovascular disease is greater than the next four most common diseases combined, including cancer. And so our goal really is to try to identify individuals who are really at risk and to work in constructing a shield, a really powerful shield to try to protect individuals from having vascular disease events. I look at that shield, I think of a number of component pieces to that. Things such as nutrition, letting food be your medicine, exercise, controlling your weight, smoking cessation, stress management, sleep management, and good dental hygiene. And those component pieces really fundamentally address one thing, and that is how do we promote, support, and sustain positive changes in one's behavior healthy lifestyle of diet and exercise and so forth. But then there's another piece to this shield, which I call knowing your numbers. What's your blood pressure? What's your blood cholesterol? What's your blood sugar? And do we need to embark on additional pharmacotherapies to mitigate risk? And in doing that, we need to better be able to stratify an individual's risk. And when we use the words risk stratification, by definition, that's imprecise. Meaning some individuals may stratify into a very high risk. Maybe they smoke two packs of cigarettes per day and have diabetes and a positive family history, but they may never have an event. And then low risk people, vegan, marathon running individuals, they may have cardiovascular disease events. And so how do we further stratify risk? Well, what the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiologies and others suggest is that we do these multivariate population-based risk prediction models where we plug in a number of independent risk factors. Do you smoke? What's your age? What's your gender? And it goes into this algorithm and it spits out a 10-year risk of having a cardiovascular disease event. And I find that interesting to me because I think as an individual, my risk of having an event is either 0% or 100%. And as a clinician, I'm not managing populations of patients. I'm managing a unique individual patient at that particular moment of our visit. And so I liken it to thinking, not what's their probability of having disease, but do they have early subclinical disease? I mean, when we think about cancer, for example, we don't say what's your probability of colon cancer or breast cancer or prostate cancer. I mean, now I calculate my age as to the next time I have to have this colonoscopy, which I'm not looking forward to. Every time I go to see the doctor and they put on the rubber glove, now I get nervous. And for you know, women, it's not the probability of breast cancer. We do mammography and pap smears and so forth. And for cardiovascular disease, to me, the eye, the vision to the potential of disease is this concept of imaging for risk prediction. Not what's your probability of the disease, but actually do you have early subclinical disease? And when present and identified, does this help you to promote, support, and sustain positive changes in your behavior? And does that further stratify risk and consideration of certain pharmacotherapies, in this case, talking about lipid lowering therapy, such as statin therapy for, for groups of individuals? And so when I talk about imaging, I'm not imaging the lumen of the blood vessel because this disease, the hoax, is that people think this is a luminal disease. This is a disease that affects the lining of the blood vessels. So any kind of stress test or perfusion imaging, which basically looks at the lumen of the vessel and the physiologic consequences of disease, may be completely normal. But people may have these sort of 10, 20, 30 percent lesions that are festering and inflammatory disease within the lining of the blood vessel that has a nonlinear progression and eventually plaques can rupture and people can have major cardiovascular events. And so when we talk about imaging, it's either CT scanning and particularly looking for coronary calcification or ultrasound-based examinations, either of the carotid arteries or the femoral arteries, really looking for the presence or absence of plaque. And amazingly, that when we evaluate individuals that have low population-based risk prediction scores, pool cohort scores, and we either do CT calcium score or carotid artery ultrasound, an overwhelming number of patients 
based on what screening test we use, we will find high-risk features, plaque in the carotid arteries or a calcium score that's elevated over, say, about even just one. And when we do that, this helps to further stratify an individual's risk and works in the discussion, disclosure, and shared decision-making with our individual patients as to certainly we always want to promote positive changes in behavior, but should you embark on additional pharmacotherapies?